So I'm going to get straight into the stream. Everyone's here. Um, so yeah, we, we launched bugbountyhunter.com, which is basically the new Bug Bounty Notes. Um, so you'll recognize some of the content on the website. Um, it's familiar, etc. I have updated some and I've made some new challenges. And yeah, I'm just going to go through real quickly because obviously I'm sure lots of you have been through majority of this content. Um, I have new reading material and guides coming out. There's a few that are due to be published um, to get on there, writing some notes and things like that. We have some guest posts. Um, a few of you have been loving the challenges and like I say all of these are based on real findings that I've actually found on um, bug bounty programs and things like that. So these are actual mistakes that developers make. Um, so say for example if we actually go onto the hands-on hacking and we go web application challenges I didn't want to go easy, medium, hard and things, so I wanted to do something that was a bit newcomer and then I've got the option to add, uh, level up your hacking, so if I want to start creating some more harder challenges and things like that, then it's going to be level up your hacking. Um, but I mean, these bugs um, and challenges also aren't your typical, hey, there's XSS here, can you find it? You do have to do a little bit of the work yourself. Um, so for example with this one it's got developers will often look um, lock down sorry their open redirects to only allow for their domain can you find out how to redirect to any website so when you go onto this website you I mean you're not told parameters or what's actually going on you can just simply see this and that's because I wanted to teach people to actually look for the parameter names and actually look what's going on um, so in this case if you was to actually look at the source I'm not quite sure how well people can see this but you can see here on this challenge we have ID equals redirect URI and the name is also that so to you as a hacker in that it should signal that that is the parameter so if we actually just try this right now if we try for slash XSS we can see nothing happened it's only again allow me to redirect to bugbountyhunter.com so if I actually put bugbountyhunter.com forward slash test, then yeah, you can see it's been reflected and yeah, you'd have to work out how to do that. Um, so yeah, a few people send chat methodology, we have to pay yet another pay Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna explain, I'm gonna be going through things, just chill. I mean, I also have to be paid for my service and triaging and helping things. And yeah, do you know what I mean? Nothing in life is for free. I've try to price things extremely fair it's not thousands of pounds like a lot of other training and things like that um, and you get three months access when there's lots to come um, but we'll get to that I should stop reading chat while going through things <laughs> it's been a while since I've streamed <laughs> so yeah um, you've got some hints on each of the challenges as well so you can work out what's going on along with guides and things like that and like I say I'm going to continue adding more challenges more guides and things like that so like I said people have said you have to pay for things there's lots on here for free to learn how to hack and going on from the web application challenges we also have the Zshorno playground which is basically like a demo of the membership so I don't know how many of you have checked this out but this is fast food hackings and it's basically a web application that works you can log in and things like that well maybe you can't log in on this one maybe you can <laughs> and the idea is you have to work out how it works what's vulnerable on here and things like that um, a few people asked me where were the flags um, I was going to show people on the live stream here but I don't I didn't want to ruin it for people that were actually looking but look for uh, there's no current flags on there at the moment but the flags that were on there if you found the api loader endpoint then if you played around a little bit more with that um you would have got some flags i will be writing them up but yeah let me know your thoughts on fast food hackings and the free challenges and things like that and obviously you can click reveal vulnerabilities if you would like to see where they are and like I say I will continue adding vulnerabilities to this there's lots and lots in the pipeline um, it's been released a bit prematurely I guess but I wanted to get it out get the content released and see how things are going basically so yeah so we won't go through all the getting started vulnerability classes because I'm sure people have checked that out. So what a lot of people are here for is they want to see what actually happens if you join Bug Bounty Hunter, right? So what happens if you join Bug Bounty Hunter is you'll first of all get access to the admin panel, uh, not the admin panel, <laughs> your actual um, own profile dashboard thing. And you can click on scope, bug feed, your progress, and then my methodology. 
So if we was to click on scope, this basically explains to you what Barker is. Um, so it's a social network for hackers proud of their dogs. And yeah, that's basically, it's designed to be like a bug bounty program where they're gonna t tell you a little about their program. And as things grow and get updated, I'll be adding updates, features, and things like that. Um, so yeah, admin panel poggers. <laughs> yeah, it's been a long week. So I will click start Barker shortly. So we have the bug feed as well, where basically it works just like the activity on Hacker One, where once you have found something, you can submit it to the bug feed for other people to view with your report. And then later down the line, I'm gonna have a public profile. So it'll be bugbountyhunter.com for slash C Shawno, and you'll be able to proudly show off what you've actually found. And like I say, these are real bugs found on real bug bounty programs like TripAdvisor and Amazon and things like that. Um, these have just been recreated into a funny functional web app basically. So you go on your progress and yeah, basically it tells you what's left to find and things. Um, there is a slight issue. Um, if you are a current member watching this, there's a slight issue with the progress tracker because the way it's designed is it's currently looking at an older image of Barker. We're having that updated today. So the progress will update and there will be some more vulnerabilities appear here. Um, so before I go into the methodology, I'm just going to go through Barker for people and there will be some time for people to have some questions and things like that. So if we click start Barker, normally it would show your IP address, but I don't want to particularly get DDoSed. <laughs> so it takes a few moments because obviously it's spinning up an image on Docker and things like that. It takes a few moments. Um, I will get to chat messages shortly. Just wait for this to start up. So you're ready to ha click begin hacking and have fun. So you click begin hacking and here's Barker. So you're able to register, you can log in, you've got communities and there's lots of things that basically you can do. Um, view the source code, yeah. This is basically meant over time, this is going to become a fully functional, well it is a fully functional website already, but with more features, more to do, and lots more bugs. Um, I'm not gonna stop adding bugs basically. And uh, yeah, I basically want to recreate what a bug bounty program is with lots to play with, lots of features and lots of bugs. So people can basically apply my methodology and learn how to hack by actually not running tools and things like that, but learning how the web application works, parameters used and things like that basically. Um, so this is the Zishorno methodology. So when you click this, this is mobile friendly as well. So you want to access it on your phone. Uh, and basically this is just a little, so before I go into it, my methodology is not some secret source material that if you read it, you're suddenly going to become a millionaire hacker overnight. I mean, it's just a flow and methodology that I follow when I'm looking at a bug bounty program. So, and someone's just mentioned WoW PDF. So yeah, it's a PDF at the moment because I did have a hard copy, but obviously with coronavirus and things, shipping things out, etc., is a bit tough. And I also had some issues with shipping to India where people never received their swag package. And it just opens up problems for me if I'm posting these out and they've paid and never turns up and people aren't happy. At least with a PDF, you're able to access it wherever you want. So yeah, going back to what I was saying, it's not, do you know what I mean? You have to actually put the work in. Um, and this, But this is the exact flow and my mindset when I look at bug bounty programs. And I've been looking at TripAdvisor, Amazon, and things like that. This is literally just my flow as to how and what I do and what I'm looking for. Um, it, I'm not going to obviously read it out word for word, etc. But yeah, do you know I mean, there's a disclaimer that I don't support illegal activity. Um, I only support legal security research and things like that. So, yeah, <laughs> a little bit about me and why I hack. I mean, I didn't intend on becoming a hacker with, do you know what I mean? I didn't set out when I was younger, oh, I want to be a hacker and things like that. I just stumbled upon it with a curious mindset. And that's something I really try to get through to people um, in my methodology and my flow is just being curious and you see something in front of you, some sort of functionality, feature, parameter, just get curious and see what happens and things like that. Um, am I presenting that PDF right now? Yeah, I am. This PDF is available right now um, on the Bug Bait Hunter membership. I, I did actually receive as well some certificate of recognition from Amazon for uh, reporting some really cool stuff. And like I say, I understand 
I've obviously been doing this for a while and a, f a few years, but a lot of people have said oh, I've struggled to find some sort of flow and methodology and things. So I'm hoping you can understand this, follow it, and create your own, basically. Um, well, not create your own, but use mine as a template starting point to understand what it takes to go through the main web app, why you're looking for certain things, common things you want to look for to find some bugs and things like that. Um, and yeah, like I say here, when doing bug bounties, my main aim is to build a good relationship with the company's apps, application security team because I try to teach people that don't just treat bug bounties as a report a bug, get paid, and you're happy because companies want our talent more than ever right now. I mean, you're hackers, we can find vulnerabilities, we can save them, we can help them. Um, so really write good reports, get to know them, impress them, because you never know what it can lead to later down the line. Um, and from a lot of my bug bounty findings is actually led to them reaching out to me privately and wanting some private testing and things like that done. So it's not just all about find the bug, collect your money and be happy sort of thing. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is basically the content. So my methodology, about me why I hack, about hackers question everything, a little about my toolkit. So an example of one of my tools is I have something called Any Changes. Um, and at the time of writing this, because bearing in mind I wrote this last year, the year before, and then I had the So You Want a Bug Hunt event in the UK. So at the time of writing it, some tools weren't publicly released, but a lot of people have created tools now to automatically scan endpoints for any changes and things like that. So, um, yeah, I'm probably going to release my tools at some point. I did intend on doing it. Yeah, I will get them out. Um, I talk about common issues I start with and why. So that is basically a lot of people will say to me, well, Sean, I know how to hack. I know how to do this, but what do I start with? So with me, I what I call it hack for features, and I basically will look at a website and start from the very beginning. And the very beginning is registering and logging in. So I'll spend lots of time logging in, registering, what parameters are used, what happens if you visit on mobile, things like that. Um, and the common issues because every website has these. Do you know what I mean? Log in, interact with your account, edit profile photo, comment on things, etc., etc. A lot of a lot of websites work the same, and when you realise that and you work out these common issues and things, you can directly know what you should be looking for with this certain feature that's in front of you. For example, um, I mean, an example is if you're in the developer. I mean, I was testing some stuff with PayPal recently, and I wanted to test their IPM. Um, instant payment notification system and I had something running locally but they wouldn't allow me to send an IPN request to localhost because obviously people had found something wrong with that and yeah so again developer portal they're sending some sort of request you know to try and hit some internal endpoints how do they handle redirects things like that and yeah um, choosing pr choosing a program, so that's not currently in the preview, which is what I'm using at the moment. Um, but basically, with choosing a program, so this is something a lot of people sometimes struggle with. They will join Hacker One, Bug Crowd, Synac, whoever there is out there these days, and there's just lots and lots of programs. Who do I look at? What what do I start doing? Basically, so with me personally this is me again this is just my methodology everyone has their own and i highly recommend people if they do buy this and check it out that you take advice the advice etc and learn to create your own but with me with choosing the program i like to first of all look for programs that i'm i'm familiar with so tripadvisor and amazon very familiar with their brand and their website so i already had a head start as to what this website about how does it work what's going on sort of thing um then once I have chosen a program, um, I basically run through how I choose stick into a program. So response time, what are their payouts like, how how do they? I prefer to stick to programs where the actual team will talk to me about this issue rather than relying on a third party analyst to look at the issue because as most of you have probably realized and experienced sometimes the analyst won't understand the issue properly or their account isn't um, upgraded to a certain state so they can't actually access the feature where your bug is and then it causes more delays whereas if somebody who worked at this company was to look at it they would be able to more a lot know a lot more quicker basically um so yeah i i talk a little bit more about that 
I've got the writing notes as you hack. Um, I have a guide coming out. Well, it's written by a good friend of mine who's actually a moderator on Bug Bank Hunter called I Brute Force. I've got to know him a lot lately. He's an awesome person. I hope to meet him in person one day as well. Um, he has a guide coming out on writing notes because he sent me his notes compared to my notes, and he was like, "Hey, Sean, you need to improve your note taking. Like, this is this is the way I do it, and I think this approach is a lot better." And that's fair play. I said to him, "I understand that." Um, with writing notes, it's about what works for you. You want to be able to open your notes and know exactly what this means and what works, whether that's saving images with your notes, whether that's writing lots of detail about the parameter, endpoints, the feature, things like that. Um, that's entirely up to you. Um, and that's, like I say, what I try to get through to people. So apply my methodology. Again, that's literally, I'm, I've explained a little bit about it where I'm literally going, I'm hacking for features. So I, I know Amazon, for example, let me log in, register. What else other features have they got? Typically, most features and things on websites will work relatively the same. They take user input, they handle user input, and they might reflect it back or they will do something. It's just getting your head around, okay, so if I input this here, where is it reflected? What, what, what does it do here? And things like that. And you should check it from like all angles. So even if your XSS payload doesn't work on your desktop, how is it rendered on mobile? Is there a completely different code base for mobile? Is there a mobile app that handles it differently and things like that um continuing hacking um that's me where i do my recon so yeah a lot of people have always said to me when do you do your recon and things like that so when i do my i do my recon second because when i first looked at this web application i've got tons of endpoints parameter names common things that i found so then when i'm doing subdomain scanning looking for looking through JS files that I haven't found, things like that, I know instantly what I could actually test with. Like, let's see if any of these parameters work. Let's see if an a user's ID here does anything. And an example of that is on TripAdvisor that I searched through Wayback Machine and found an old endpoint which took a new parameter, a parameter that I'd found and put them together and found a bug. Um, I believe that if I hadn't have looked through their main web application first and I discovered this endpoint with Wayback Machine, I wouldn't have had a clue what it does and I probably wouldn't have found what it does for a while basically. But I spotted these two patterns. I was like, hang on a second. I've seen this being used on this endpoint here on their current site. I wonder if this actually works on the old site. Um, yeah, Bob's your uncle. <laughs> The last step of my methodology is this rinse and repeat. So that's pretty much what a lot of people are doing right now is step one is they just run their tools, um, scan for, so I don't send a tool out to basically do mass scanning and look for things. Um, I automate check-in for certain JS files. If so, if I've determined that this JS file has a lot of functionality in code and they're gonna continue to update it, then I'll simply add it to what I've called any changes determine how long I want it to poll and check for any changes and just teach me any tell me anything that's basically going on there um, there's obviously a few other things that you can automate but that's where I explain as well it, it's, you can learn to code and read people like Tom Nom Nom's code and understand it and factor it to something else and begin to automate a lot of things that's there when you can potentially stay ahead of the game with I mean look at today is new he has automated pretty much everything and as soon as a subdomain comes online that's vulnerable for takeover he's got it so that's where he's understood how he can do this and then automate it um, and yeah basically and then I just talk about a few of my findings obviously I haven't mentioned any companies names and things like that mentioned some useful resources and final words um, somebody mentioned sharing is caring that's just me mentioning a few people that I believe has helped me since day one when I got started I mean brute logic honestly Rod I remember men uh, messaging him back in what 2015 2016 just just heard of hacker one just getting started and I knew XSS and I had a really interesting XSS I couldn't get to work and he had like 10,000 followers or something at the time and I thought he's obviously a celebrity. I had like a couple of hundred, didn't, you know what I mean? I was like, he's not gonna reply to me and he ended up replying to me and helping me and I just had the most utmost respect for that guy because he is so hard working and produces so much for the community. Um, so yeah, if you don't already know who Brute Logic is, which I'm sure a lot of you do, then yeah, definitely give him a follow and some love. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's basically my methodology. So a lot of people are, 
talking saying can i get um i think z shawno's book is sands of bug bounty uh, i don't know what that means but yeah the idea is like i say it's not a secret source it's not going to make you rich it's a flow to help you understand what's going on why you should be trying these things etc etc and yeah the rest is up to you to learn practice replicate and go at it really um, a lot of you have been asking as well like how do i get my hands on it so obviously you can either purchase it but i am going to be giving away um some free trials with adding some more flags to fast food hackings and some more competitions and things like that because as somebody said in the chat sharing is caring um and i have tried to price things fairly for people because obviously the, the server costs and things like that um, that's why I've got launch promos where you get three months included of content and there's a lot that's going to be coming out in three months um, and yeah so that's basically bug bounty hunter and what you get um, so let's actually submit a vulnerability has it oh, let's turn it off because it didn't get any activity Oh, no, it hasn't. There we go. So if I go submit vulnerability, this allows you to simply find report what you have found, and then I'm on the other end, and I can review it for you and give you feedback. And the idea is, it's meant to be like a bug bounty experience where you're actually writing reports to what you found, and I triage it, give you feedback, help you, and it's a real finding basically. So yeah, well, pardon me. <laughs> How long? So yeah, I'm gonna look at the chat. Let's see. If I've missed anything here, and if anyone has any current questions based on what I've said, just let me know in the chat. Um, so, is this PDF free or what? Just asking. Uh, no, like I said, it's not currently free. The current promo is £150 for three months included. You get lifetime access to my methodology. Um, you, and then if you do choose to carry on hacking on Barker, then it's just £20 a month after. Or if you already know a methodology and you just want to test out Barker, then it's just a simple £35 and you get one month included free. Um, and there is going to be some, um, like I say, some free codes being given away. I've already given away like 11 already. Um, so yeah, there's lots out there. Let's carry on going through. Will I share my toolkit? Yes, I will. How can I get the PDF? We've done that. Can we get your book separate? Um, that's a good question. Yes, I am going to add that as an option um, soon. Um, but the idea of my methodology, because I don't know if you've read my Medium post, um, but I basically, let's get it up actually real quick. So I basically had a lot of plans for teaching people how to hack, and I was going to have one to one sessions with me where I ship you my book and I put things, um, a web application live and I mean we hack like this over Mike and I'm helping you out and things like that but yeah it didn't go too well <laughs> um, where did I mention it yeah so it was down here I mentioned it I do plan on basically now allowing people to just purchase my methodology if they don't want to learn to hack and they simply want to just have my methodology but the idea was I wanted people to follow the methodology and then be able to instantly practice and hack on a real world uh, functioning web application rather than hey there's XSS here can you find it um, so yeah how long will the launch promo be available there's no time limit um, I'm not in this for the money. I want to help people out and get involved in bug bounties, learn how to hack and have a good time and hopefully either create this as their full-time job or as just a side job. So at the moment, there's there's no time limit. It's not going to be going away anytime soon at the moment, um, if I'm honest. And if the even if the launch promo does end, I'm still not going to be thousands of pounds to purchase because that's, in my opinion, ludicrous. But... <laughs> Will there be video content as well? So yeah, great question. So when you actually purchase membership, you get access to a private Discord as well. And I've been communicating with the members and I'm gonna be having get togethers where we'll do hacking together on either Barker or because obviously, I mean, when you pay it, I know who you are and we trust each, I can then trust you and obviously you trust me. Um, then we can hack together potentially on some VDPs or bug bounty programs and yeah maybe do some one-to-one -one mentoring and things like that that is something potentially on the horizon um, I'm just trying to take things a little bit slow at the moment and not overdo it does your methodology cover finding vulnerabilities over the platform you have created no it doesn't 
Um, however, that's, I guess, where my idea that I've promote said in Discord, where I'm going to be having get-togethers where we can go through Barker and things like that. And you've also got the bug feed where people have been sharing their bugs and you can read. I mean, I haven't got access to it on this account at the moment because you need to submit some bugs, but some people have submitted some really detailed reports so you can learn lots from them. Because... The reason why I've done this, and I understand people will submit, be submitting and disclosing some of the same bugs, but every hacker approaches something differently and everyone has their own little twist on things. And I want people to be able to show that off proudly. Um, I don't want people to feel like, oh, so-and-so has already found that. I want you to feel like if you felt really cool finding this bug, it took a lot of effort. I want you to be proud of that finding and show it off. Um, so yeah. You may have already said it, but I know you're occupied with Bug Bounty Hunter and you're searching for an InfoSec role in your community. I want to know if you offer one-to-one -one memberships for a competitive fee. Um, that is something I'm going to be offering members as well. Um, I've had some thoughts around if you submit a certain amount of bugs or if you've been a member for a certain amount of time and you haven't found anything, things like that, then I can reach out and help you out. No definite plans just yet on the one-on-one -on -one mentoring. Um, there's this i've got lots in the pipeline lots i mean for example i don't want to spoil too much as such but a lot of people want to practice to be an analyst and things like that so in the future you're going to be able to join bug bounty hunter as an analyst and actually triage the bugs on barker so if you want to work for a company as an application security engineer and they've tasked you to triage bug bounty reports and things like that and you're not understanding this then you can come onto bug bounty hunter um, analyst portal and you can triage these bugs replicate them and yeah you can basically learn how it's all done and get experience so that is something that's going to be coming soon. Reading public disclosure of a report will help you in bug bounty or not? Um, yes, I, I recommend reading. So it's actually part of my methodology where before, well, not before I go onto a website, but when I've chosen a website, I'll look to see if anyone else has found anything. So don't just look on Hacker One public disclose, look on open bug bounty for if any old XSS has been found, what parameter, what payload, look for any blog posts on Google. Look to see if anyone else has poked at this website and what did they find? Because uh, it can help give you a lead and like a sort of head start, not a head start as such, but a lead and something to start with really. Um, mastering a single bug is better than noob at all bugs. So I explained that and this is why I've designed Barker the way it is because my methodology is not about just looking for one bug, it's about hacking for the features. So every website has a login um, feature usually and a register. What are the most common things found there? Leak and SSO tokens, XSS in the return URL parameter depend on how it's reflecting and things like that. Account takeovers, whatever else can't think of the top of my head and whatever's there OWARF issues um and the idea is i like to get to the end of a website and it's like well there's nothing else for me to click on here and there's no more features for me to click on and then that's where review your notes go back through the website because that's actually step two of my web my methodology is go back through the website once you've actually tested it because there's so much you can miss on there and um, new things being added um yeah a bug bounty hunter's life never ends really and i've seen a few people say oh hey is bug bounty is going to be around in a few years it's not going to go anywhere anytime soon in my opinion it's being adopted massively and it's here to stay <laughs> in my opinion anyway um, so how to use your PDF, read the PDF first or while we hack in? So that's entirely up to you. You have lifetime access to the PDF. Um, it's 79 pages from the top of my head. 70 pages, I don't know. Can't remember the top of my head. Wrote it a year ago, so now. Um, but yeah, read it and practice really. I mean, you've got three months on Barker and lifetime access. I think, I think there's plenty of time to read and hack if I'm honest, uh, Haney OB. <laughs> um, share your Discord server, so it's actually only available for members at the moment, I'm afraid. Um, potentially I can have some sort of public one as more challenges become available and as we build up fast food hackings and there's lots more bugs. Um, will Bug Bounty have its own Bug Bounty platform? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, hmm. I, I, mean, I, I don't want to spoil things and get people's hopes up as such, but 
the end game is I want people to be able to prove themselves that they can find these vulnerabilities without having to slave your guts off on VDPs to get private invites or get access to better scope things or etc etc I want people to actually hack on a real functioning website find real bugs write a real report um, because then when you disclose it you've got nobody to say hey you can't disclose it and it can show to companies hey I actually know what I'm doing you should potentially invite me to your bug bounty program or we should potentially do some work together because look I actually know what I'm doing here so the end goal is to be able to connect hackers with uh, companies that that's the end end goal um, at the moment yeah I haven't worked any on that <laughs> but yeah I, I want to help people get properly involved in bug bounties let's say create either a side job or create it as your full-time income I mean there was one researcher who was saying he's earned 300,000 this year from bug bounties um, and given con the current times that's extremely well <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, Ben Doherty, my first paid bounty was a re-report of a modified open bug bounty report. So see, exactly, that's what it is. It's the curious mindset. What's been found already? What's out there? Does it still work and things? Um, so will I have its own bug bounty program? Yeah, I'm going to sign up to Hacker One and at the to begin with, because do you know what I mean, I'm not made of money. Um, I won't be able to pay crazy amounts of money for any issues found because... Do you know what I mean? I'm not made of money. I'm not some big billionaire business. Um, but I will offer bounties for if people find some issues because, well, I want to be able to pay people fairly for their time and offer you membership and things like that. That's to come. Um, yeah, so anyone have any more questions or concerns um, around Barker, my methodology, or anything like that? Um, like I say, in the Medium post, there is... Um, telling you lots to come so there's more challenges and guides on its way more invites uh, more videos and write-ups so I'm doing an interview with um, Patrick Patrick Pratic is that how you pronounce your name Pratic um, about some bug bounties and things like that and I've also got um, two new write-ups where I found it's just in my opinion a boring XSS but I was able to chain it because um, there was a token well a header in the request and it looked like it did something because throughout the entire web application it did actually do something however I managed to find somewhere where it didn't do something and yeah made some cool things leak um, and there was another video I also have a video I need to go on my YouTube after this and work it out there was another video that I had sorted to come out soon as well um, yeah that's basically it going through really um there's lots coming from members we have an update coming today which is going to introduce some new features and things like that and the aim is to continue pushing out new features every two weeks and so there's always something new for you to hack on and later down the line there's going to be something called barker patched coming out where it's basically as it says all of the bugs on barker are going to be patched but have they been patched correctly because you'll find sometimes when you are doing testing on bug bounty programs they will fix the bug and you've realized they haven't actually fixed it properly and some of you have actually said to me like hey sean what should i do should i actually re-report this um or should i add it onto the report and so in my opinion if you've reported something and they've marked it as resolved and then you find a bypass then you make a new report and they should pay another bounty however if the issue is still triaged and they ask you to retest and you find a bypass then it should go on the same report and the company in my opinion should honor you finding a bypass and pay more bounty but in some cases you'll find they don't they just end up fixing it and don't pay any more bounty that's why you've heard of some researchers where they've said yes you can actually you, they've realized you can bypass it but they don't tell the company let them mark it as resolved report it claim bounty <laughs> i don't recommend being a, i wouldn't say cheap with the bug bounty things but i would be professional as such and try and explain to them why you should get paid more bounty because you found a bypass and things like that um, so yeah, let's see if there's any more questions here. What different methodologies and tool sets do, do millionaire hackers in bug bounty follow? 
Well, um, if you listen to Doggy G's interview with Ben Namsek, so Doggy G literally focuses on what he knows he's good at. He knows Yahoo like the back of his hand. He knows features and what they do, parameters. He knows how to find when things become exposed online. When do you know I mean when they push things online? He just, do you know I mean, he's learnt a hell of a lot. He's been hacking on them for like four or five years now. The same with Nafi on Yahoo. Um, things take time. I mean. Amazon have a VD, VRP right now. Um, they have a huge scope, lots to play with. Maybe you could learn how they're working and maybe you become millionaire hacker from them. Who knows? <laughs> uh, I just want to say a huge thank you to you. I watched your stream and the next day I got my first valid bug. Congratulations. Well done. Huge congrats. There are lots and lots of bugs out there on bug bounty programs and they are being pushed out every day. Uh, membership is up for purchase right now yes um, I accept PayPal and obviously PayPal accepts debit or credit card um, yeah and there will be a competition posted after the stream I just have to push the update um, have some food first <laughs> and yeah like someone just said code coder there's no secret there really is no secret to hacking the things that I'm doing on bug bounty programs when I'm finding XSS finding idols account takeovers token leakage github leaks things like this there's no secret no secret i'm going to give you another example of a bug and to prove to you, there's no secret so there was a login portal i mean this was found nine ten months ago now i don't know if it's fixed but so there was a login portal and in inside the javascript code they basically told me where it redirected if it was successful so i attempted to visit this and it done a meta refresh but actually loaded the content of the admin portal and inside there there was even more api end calls and things like that and i was man i managed to extract personal information of their users there was no tools needed there was no special hackery or anything it was literally looking at what was in front of me and how does this website function what is it showing me i mean look you right click on view page source you have the html you have the javascript who knows on this page what actually happened I mean, this is the bug bounty hunter website but does do you know what i mean for example here after you've paid it redirects to bug bounty hunter.com for slash thanks so imagine if this was an admin panel and you saw that after logging in that it actually redirected to this what would happen if you viewed it what does it do you go down the rabbit hole and yeah you find bugs <laughs> will there be a ranking system yeah um some people have recommended that i add a ranking system for um bug bounty hunter it's to come um a lot of this is just a honestly as a beta release as such where i'm just working out the kinks and finding out any issues fixing some things applying some updates i'm trying to take it a little bit easy i'm trying not to push it out there too much as such um, but hopefully yeah, as I get into full flow of things there's going to be lots of competitions and lots of things to get people involved and yeah how much time do you spend in bug bounty hunting these days um, if I'm honest for the last two months I've just been doing client tests where they've reached out to me and said hey can you test our site for a certain amount of time for a certain amount of money um, I've only been doing them I haven't done too much bug hunting I'm going to be getting back to bug hunting 100% before the year ends um, and get myself into a routine. I've just been non-stop wanting to get this out and ready for people so we can learn hacking together and I can help you and findings that I find on bug bounty programs I can then instantly put on here and things like that. So yeah. Um, I love you, marry me. I, I accept your proposal, hacker. <laughs> How often do you try out new tools? I don't try out new tools often, if I'm honest. I really just use Burp um, and subdomain scanners to find things. I really, I don't even use the Burp scanner thing. Um, and if I'm brutally honest, brutally, brutally honest, I haven't renewed my Burp Pro subscription because, well, I'm only, I only use Repeater really. I do use Intruder sometimes, but you can you can make that quick and get around their slow ways uh, i believe it was inside a phd kt that posted a tip on that or something uh, i literally just as long as i've got access to repeater and i can see the request and i understand what's going on I, i'm happy <laughs> can i pet barker if i become a member um yeah if, sure if you really want to i'd love for you to all meet snowy one day because that is who barker is based on <laughs> 
Uh, so, for group who attended your workshop last year, any place for access? Yes, I am working on getting that sent out to you. Um, I've literally just been making sure everything works, etc. I have a long list of your emails from the PayPal transaction from before. Your invite will 100% be out before the week ends. I promise you this. I have not forgot about you, my long-term supporters. Um, so do you think is JavaScript is all about finding API keys and hidden directories? So it's not just about API keys. So JavaScript helps a website function. So when you click a certain button or a certain action happens or a web socket message comes in, JavaScript helps that function basically. So with JavaScript for me, it's endpoints so for slash api whatever whatever seeing what the function does is there any commented out code is there any dev comments and just trying to get my head around how it works basically and things like that um, and yeah like someone else's message said dom xss post message and things like that you can look for special keywords to make your life easier do you know I mean post message um Look for jQuery making um, AJAX requests and things like that. Look for if handling the response. Look for common keywords because it's not just looking for functionality in JavaScript files. It's looking for parameters names as well. So look for the most common like redirect things like that because it might lead on to how they. Do you know I mean, for example, let's say you search for redirect URL in a JavaScript file and there was a whole array of do you know I mean hard coded what looked like parameter names and redirect URL URL was in there they all might be parameter names but they're not to the uh, average user parameter names and you might not see them be used everywhere but there is all of their parameter names they're using I have seen that in some cases I'm not even joking where why they did that I don't know the way they handled things but can we get physical book later yeah um, I would love to be able to ship out a physical copy a signed copy to people and things like that it's just with coronavirus shipping is quite tough at the moment things are delayed and like i said i've had issues with shipping to places like india for some reason i i believe i've put the address correct and it's all sent and it just never arrives some people have told me that that's what the indian postal service is like and apparently sometimes they steal it but i i don't know it was sent from my end but that's something yeah so niche bugs um they are things that i'm going to be adding to barker and guides and things like that um yeah the idea is i want to be able to get every single bug type vulnerability and things like that not only as a guide and information but also on barker um that's the long-term plan yeah i also I'm probably going to be looking to potentially hire somebody to join me um, to help create some content and things like that because at the moment I'm doing absolutely everything by myself apart from maintaining Barker and I want to get some talented people, help create some jobs and yeah, do some cool stuff together really. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Um, let's see what else messages we've got. Uh, please do live streams at least once or twice a month. Yes, yeah, so now I'm getting back into the swing of things. I'm going to be doing a hell of a lot more live streams, live hacking and things like that. So, yeah. How to under understand JavaScript easily? I mean, depends what the JavaScript does. Sometimes it can be quite tough to understand. That's why... Um, I look for the common keywords. Try, try read it. Like, obviously, I don't know if English is your... I'm not saying understand it like English, but understand the flow like English, so step by step. If it's just sometimes it can just be if statements. If so and so equals this, do this, send a request here. What do you know what I mean? Um I would take look at W3 schools and it's basic, but there's some random JavaScript stuff on there which you can play around with and things like that. It's just trial and error, if I'm honest. Um so we've got any more messages. Is my methodology book going to be put on Amazon? Um, potentially, I don't know. Um, I mean, I did a hard copy last year, didn't I, for my So You Wanna Hack, but that was because I was actually in person with people um, and they were hacking on an actual web application there and then. I feel like with the hard copy on Amazon, like, I don't know, I, f I just felt like when if people want to buy this, I wanted them to practice practice instantly sort of thing i didn't want people to buy it read it and be like 
okay, this is cool, but where should I practice this and things like that? I wanted to give people an instant practice it here. Let's go. Um, maybe I can add if I sell it on Amazon some sort of hard coded credential or way to access back or such. I don't know. <laughs> we will see. Is this your web or is it someone else's? Um, this is mine. Yeah, I I coded this, designed it. Um, yeah, this is mine. <laughs> For bug bounty hunters, is it necessary to learn programming language? No. In fact, I believe that's on my methodology right there. I'm gonna let's see what my let's see what I've put. Let's read it. Uh, I remember reading it a second ago on here when we were doing it. Here we go. A lot of people ask me, do I need a developer background to be a hacker? In my opinion, the answer is no, but it definitely does help. Having a basic understanding as to how websites work with HTML, JavaScript and CSS can aid you in creating proof of concepts or finding bypasses. You can easily play with HTML and JavaScript on these websites. Um, so yeah, it's not that you need fluent understanding of these languages. You just need to understand how they actually work. Um, and common things that you're going to need. So, for example, with JavaScript, you might need to learn some AJAX requests um, to extract information for a proof of concept. Um, you might need to learn HTML for some weird bypass or some HTML tags and things like that. For PHP, you're going to mainly need it for like server side bugs, uh, file upload, RCE, and things like that. Um, yeah. So. Let's have a look at some more messages. Where to start with XSS? I mean, there is so much content on there for XSS. You've got WebSec Academy, Pentester Lab. You've now got Bug Bounty Hunter. There's lots and lots of challenges for XSS. You really do need to just go on Google and look for that. Honestly, XSS is everywhere. <laughs> So I've been following for a long time and strongly follow what you said. Stick to one program, play features. I've been sticking to one one app for more than one month from now, and I have reported seventeen bugs, and none of them are dupes. See? Can you hear that, everyone? Can you see that? That is proof in the pudding, and that's exactly what I do. Just stick to the same program, and before you know it, you've got hundreds of bugs, and they'll be releasing new features, and you just instantly know what to try and do because. I don't know. I feel like sometimes developers don't learn what we're reporting. They just say, oh, there's this bug here, is there? They fix it and then they go and make a new feature, but they haven't learned from the bug that they fixed. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, any more questions? Any more questions about Bug Bounty Hunter or anything? Because hopefully you all like the look of it hopefully it's all going to help you i mean even if you don't pay i'm hoping that even the free content and the playground and things like that and the guides is enough to help you get started in bug bounties learn a little bit about web app security and how to look for these bugs and hopefully maybe make you some money i mean typically minimum is 500 dollars for xss on some programs and yeah that's 500 bucks and if you haven't checked out my methodology and how I actually um, look for it it is free here and so you know I mean with XSS you're literally just trying certain things what's being bypassed if this is being bypassed you try this what happens if I try that and trial and error trial and error so yeah I'm glad you all seem to like the site um, yeah, um, be sure to keep an eye out for when I'm going to be giving away some flags um, after the stream. I'm going to have some food and have a little break. And then I'll be posting this evening, giving away some free flags and invites to Fast... Uh, not Fast Food Hackins. The unique vulnerabilities and flags will be on Fast Food Hackins. And if you discover them, they'll give, basically tell you, hey, look, you found the code. Email this to me and then I'll send you an invite. Um, there'll be access to get full access to my methodology if you discover them. And then I'll also be doing a few giveaways um, for free trials, basically. In fact, should we do it right now? Let's do it right now. Uh, I'm probably going to get spammed. I was going to say, email this email and I'll pick five random people to give you a trial. But I don't, there's like 170 people viewing me right now and I would end up destroying my... Alright, let's do it like this. I'm going to open my inbox right now on Twitter 
you send me your email, I'll send you a trial. And I'm going to pick 10 random people. Let me just open my DM right now. Uh, okay, my DM is open. The first five people you send me, like the first 10, well, it's not the first 10, but you send me some email, send me this DM, and I'll check back in an hour and I'll pick 10 completely random people. Literally, just click a random DM and I'll send you an invite to that email. Just literally put your email. You don't have to put no reason as to why you need to be invited and things like that. Um, literally just send me your email and I'm just going to click a random one and send you an invite. I'm going to see if there's anyone that's... Oh, look at this. Flooding through. I'm going to do one right here, right now to prove I am legit. So, Silent Killer. You've just DM'd me on there, haven't you? Let's, uh, all right, let's access this. Alright, in after the stream, check your email because you should have been invited. Although it should have sent right now, in fact. I can't right, let's just I'm inviting you now. I'm doing it right here, right now. Alright, silent killer, an invite has been sent. We'll do another one. Ah, uh, this. Of course, I'm going to invite you. I mean, I've been meaning to do you for a while <laughs> Cause of the back it, um, because of the past event. All right, you've been invited. Welcome. Uh, let's invite Ben Theory. Welcome. Silent Killer, don't worry. I won't show your email. Private. Should be, yeah. It's just, yeah, it's not seeing that screen. Cool, I've sent a few invites. We'll send one more to Nathan Griffiths. I'm going to send you an invite now as well. And there's three invite, actually, no, only two trials sent out. And I've sent one that I owed to this. Um, yeah, enjoy. It's a free trial. You get limited access to my methodology. You've got full access to Barker. Have a little play. There's going to be an update to Barker later, like I say, where there's going to be some more bugs added. Um, yeah. Like I say, send me a DM or your email, and I'm gonna. I've got another eight to send, and I'll send them within the next hour. I'm gonna just pick random people, and yeah. So, will I upload this video after live? Yeah, it'll be on my channel. It's not gonna go anywhere. Um, and how many flags am I gonna add? Uh, I'll probably. I've got plans to add another three flags. But um, when you find the flag, it won't remove that flag until a couple of people have found it sort of thing. Um, just to give a chance for a few people to find it. I didn't want to make it so if one flag, flag was found, then it disappears for everyone sort of thing. So, yeah. But, yeah, I hope you all like the content. And I can't wait to show you what's coming out. And, yeah, I can't wait to basically keep teaching you guys how to hack and get in involved in bug bounties. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the stream. Uh, it's been really good to be back streaming and talking with everyone. And yeah, I'll see you all out on the internet. I hope you're all staying safe and well. And yeah, remaining safe if you're on lockdown. Anyone's ever going through some bad times, you just want to chat. Honestly, just reach out to me. We're all going through the same thing, aren't we? Uh, with lockdown and isolation, not being able to work, concerns. We're all in this together. I hope you're all staying well and safe. Um, we'll get through this. Stay safe, everyone, and take care. Take it easy. Thank you. Much love.